Today we're talking about percentages, which is a difficult subject for a lot of people because it uses fractions, decimals, and ratios. Let's look at how it's set up. A percent is part over whole equals percent over 100. Okay? This is how we want to set up everything that we do in percentages. Part over whole is the definition of the fraction. Remember we had whole times fraction equals part. Well, if we divide both sides by whole, the whole, we have that the fraction is part over whole. This is the decimal part. For example, if we have 25%, That's 25% over 100%, which is 0.25. And the combination of the two with the equal sign between them is the ratio part. This means that you can use ideas from fractions and ratios and decimals when solving these problems. All right. In grade school, when we first saw these, you were told to cross multiply like this. That always works every single time. However, it's usually much more work than you need to do. So I'm going to be showing you things that you can do quickly and easily to get the answers. Okay? There's three different ways to solve these. The cross multiplying is one of them. Okay, we can cross multiply. Okay. There's three different ways we can, we can solve these. One is to treat it like a ratio. That means you look for patterns. If you can't find a pattern, you simplify. If you still don't see a pattern, then you cross multiply. Okay? The second way is to use fractions and substitute. When you have 25%, you can change that to one fourth. So if you are looking for, let's put it over here. 25% of some number, 600. You can change this. 25% is one fourth. We're just dividing the top and bottom by 25. So you have X over 600 equals one over four. Now it's easier to do because you're looking at a four and the six here. You can find you can find the relationship. Okay, sixty divided by four is fifteen, and then the zero, so x equals one hundred and fifty. And the third way is, is no, let me. Ask. So we're substituting in a fraction for the percents. Okay? The third way is what I call the 10% method.
the 10% method works when you have when you're looking for this number or this number. Sometimes you can get the hole here, but not often. It has to be something nice. We don't often get nice things. So this is why we can't have nice things. Anyway, the 10% method uses the fact that 10% is just 0.1. Okay, you're just moving the decimal one place. In this case, 10% of 600 is 60. So then we know we're looking to build 25%. So we multiply it by a 2. So 20% is 120. So now we need 5. 5 is half of this. So we have 150. Okay? Since this is a new method to you, I'm going to uh, do some examples. Let's say you are at a restaurant and the total bill is $65. And you're going to leave tip. But you're not sure how much. You, you don't want to uh, be too cheap, but you don't want to give away the farm either. So you're looking to find out what 15%, 18%, and 20% is. We use the 10% method. We go, okay, 10% is six dollars and fifty cents. Just move the decimal, there you go. Half of that is three dollars and twenty-five cents. So we have fifteen percent as nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Twenty percent It's just times two. So 20% is $13. How do we do 18%? Well, 18% is 20 minus two. So we find 2% by just moving the decimal over again. Now we're subtracting and we get 18% equals $11.70. So then you can decide which of these your server should get. Okay, let's do some examples. Once again, solving word problems, we're on P for percentages. P1, number one, landlord increased the rent for the apartment units in his building from 800 a month to 960 a month. What was the percent of the increase of the rent? Okay, so we're looking for increase. Now remember, ratios have to have the same units across each one. So this is going to be the total. This is going to be the increase. Okay, so it was 800, but now it's 960. So the increase is $160. All right, which do we use for our total on the bottom here? 800 or 960? You always use the one that occurred first in time. Okay, sometimes the problems will give you the increase before this number or this number before that number. 
we want the first one that occurred in time. So it, the, the rent was 800, I don't want to long add 800, and then dump to 960. Because 800 came first, that's the one we use in this spot here. Okay? So, if we're using method one, the ratio method, we look for patterns. I see an eight and a 16, okay? So, we're going from the bottom to the top. Eight and 16 is a times two. But this one has one zero and this one has two, so it's, so it's times point two. So 100 times point two is 20. Okay. At this point, we can't use method two to substitute in because we don't know what this number is. With the 10% method, we say 10% is 80. How do we get to 160 from 80? Well, we double it. So 160 is 20%. P1, number four. Penny Worth is buying a video recorder that is sale priced at $442. This is a 15% reduction from the regular price. What is the regular price? Okay. This is not set up correctly. Okay? This, this, what I've done here is just taking the numbers and sticking them where I think they belong. But this is not correct. Because this is saying that 442 was the 15%. That wasn't after a 15% discount. Okay? So, if this is the whole price, we have a discount. And we have the sale price. The 442 is the sale price. The 15% is the discount. These are not the same thing. Okay? We can't we can't make them the same thing. What we can do is say, okay, if this is 15% and the whole thing is a hundred percent, then this must be 85%. Okay? So, we need to change this to 85. Okay, we don't have a, a anything we can substitute the fraction for yet. We're looking for the whole, so the 10% method isn't, isn't necessarily going to be useful. So let's look at it as a ratio. What can we do as a ratio? Okay. I see that we can take a 5 out of both of these. Okay. That gives us 17 and 20. Okay, can we take 17 out of 442? Uh, we'll say 2, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 1 is 2, 3, so 5, let's try 6, 6 times 7 is 42, 6, 10, there we go. Okay, 26. So it's 26. So 26 times 20 will give us that answer. 
So 26 times 2 is 40, 52, and then we tack a zero on. So it was initially $520 was the original price. P1 number 6. Of the 640 people entered in marathon, 96 were women. What percent were men? Okay, so we have 96 over 640. X over 100. If we solve this the way it's written right now, what we will get is the percent of women, not the percent of men. In this case, I'm going to find the percent of women because 96 is a small number. So that means it's going to be easier. This is going to give us a small number and it's going to be easier to subtract from 100 than it is to subtract 96 from 640 and then do the percentage. Okay? So this is women. So make a note so that we know what we're doing. All right. In this case, I'm going to use the 10% method because it's the easiest. 10% equals 64. Working for 96. So 15% is 96. So 15% were women. That makes men 85%. 100 minus 15 is 85. If you had done this the standard way, let's see what kind of work you'd have to do. 640 minus 96 is 544. So we would put 544 up here. Then there isn't any obvious pattern, so we'd have to cross multiply. 544, 0, 0, divided by 64, 0. Kill off a 0. So we'd have to divide 5,440 by 64. I don't want to do that. P1 number 11. The Pyros insured their $86,000 home for 75% of its value. How much will they lose if the house burns down? All right. They have 86,000 is the price of the house. If they insured it for 75%, that means that they lose 25% if it burns. All right, 25 is one of the ones that we can use the substitution method on. So instead of 25 over 100, We're going to put 1 over 4. Okay? So we're just dividing this 86 by 4. 86,000. Zero, zero. So they lose 21,500. Isn't that much easier than multiplying 86,000 by 25? Yeah, I think it is. Here's another one like that. P2, number four. A solar calculator was priced at $18.60. Calculation. Purchased it at a discount of 33 and a third off the original price. What was the sale price? Okay, so it was 1860. 33 and a third percent. Okay, 33 and a third is one third. So we can just get rid of this stuff and write in one third. Okay. But the thing to remember is, this is the discount, not the sale price. However, if we calculate the discount, we, we 
can subtract and get the sale price. So all we're doing is dividing 1860 by 3, 6, 20. So the discount was 620. 1860 minus 620 is 1240. So he paid $12.40. All right, I've showed you a couple times when substituting it, the fraction in makes things easier. So let's take a real quick look at what, what uh, percentages you're looking for. Okay. Uh, one half is 0.5, which is 50%. One third is 0.333, repeating. And that's 33 and a third percent. One fourth is 0.25, which is 25 percent. One fifth is 0.2, which is 20 percent. And one eighth is 0.125, or 12 and a half percent. Okay, this is the this is an important one. 12 and a half. If you get a problem that has a fractional percentage involved, look to see if it's a fun, if it, look to see if it is 33 and a third or 12 and a half, or if those numbers go into it. Okay, remember we looked at three eighths, which was three times this. Okay. 37 and a half is 3 eighths. So, if you get a problem Let's move these over here. So if you get a problem that has one of these numbers in it, you can make use of substituting that in. For example, P3, number five, Flora Scheim, shoulder to... For example, P3, number five, Flora Scheim sold a total of 8,620 worth of shoes in one month. If her commission was 12 and a half percent, how much did she earn? Okay, so we want to know what 12 and a half percent is of 8,620. We go, okay, 12 and a half, that's normally pretty ugly to do, right? However, we can switch that to one eighth. Okay, so we're dividing 8620 by 8. Okay. So her pay is $1,077.50. Let's look at how we can do this with the 10% method. Ten percent is eight sixty-two. Okay, that's this part. Now we need two and a half percent. Two and a half percent is one fourth of ten percent. Okay. Eight sixty-two divided by four 
is two, one, five, point five. So we're going to add this two hundred and fifteen point five here. And we get the same answer, 1077.5. But you have to recognize that two and a half is one fourth of 10. Okay, let's do uh, P1 number 12. The Lobos won 38 to 45 games this season. What percentage of the games did they win? Okay, 38 out of 45. If we read the answers, we get 82.4, 84.4, 86.6, and 81.5. So those are pretty close together. So we're not going to be able to estimate anything on this. We're going to have to actually do the math. However, what we can do is we can, we can treat that as a fraction and divide it to get the decimal because then we're just moving this decimal around, but we have the actual numbers. So let's do that. 38 divided by 45. Okay. So 45 doesn't go into 38. So we put a decimal point here and we add a zero. 45 goes into 38, what? Six, seven, let's say eight times. 8 times 4, 32, 36. So we have 200. 45 times 2 is 90. So this is going to be 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 4 is 16, 17, 18. We got, a, we got another 200 there. So it's going to be 4.4. And it's going to be 4, 4, 4, 4. So we got the 84.4 percent. It's a point, the decimal is over here, but because we got that 100, 84.4 percent. Okay. Okay, P2 number two. Macho's Men's Store. Advertised shorts that usually sell for $15.50 for a special price of $12.40. What was the rate of the discount? Okay, this is another one where they're giving us the sale price and asking for the discount. So they're two different things. So let's subtract to find out what the discount was monetarily. 1550 minus 1240. That's $3.10. Okay, so we're putting 310 over the original price, which is the 1550. Okay. This is another one where the 10% method is the fastest. You say 10% is $1.55, and we're trying to build $3.10. So that's just times two. Okay. How did I know to multiply times two if I if you don't see the 1550 going into 310 very well? Okay. Well, first thing I do is I do the 10%. And then even when I don't know what I'm looking for, I multiply times two to, to see whether it's higher or lower than 20. Okay? Because that'll tell me whether I need to go between these two or keep adding on. P2, number six, Bill Letting bought a house for $75,000. Five years later, he sold the house for $120,000. What percent profit did he make? Okay, profit, so we have to subtract them. We have 12, 120,000 minus 75,000. Okay, 25 takes us up to 100, so this is 45. So he made 45,000. 
and he paid 75000 That one occurred first in time. So this is what we're looking at, okay? So first thing I do is get rid of all these zeros. So we got 45 over 75. Right off the bat, we know it's over 50%. Okay, but, so, but that cancels out two of the answers, the 40% and the 50%. The other answers are 60% and 75%. Just by doing that, we cut the number of possible answers in half. And if we were pressed for time, we could just guess one of those, okay? But let's do the math, huh? Looking at this, I say, okay, I can take a five out of each of these. Okay, take out five here and five here. Oh, one, 25 is 15. Nine over 15. I can simplify that easy. Uh, take a three out. Three fifths. Three fifths is 60%. Okay, one fifth is 20% and there are three of them. So we just multiply this 20 times three to get the 60%. So there's our answer. P2 number three, a Runman radio is sold at a discount of 12 and a half percent. The discount amounts to $6. What's the original price of the radio? Okay, so we have $6, we're looking for the total. This is 12 and a half. Okay, remember that the same thing has to go on the top. This is the discount and this is the discount. This is the total and this is the total. Okay, but 12 and a half is the same as 1 eighth. Now we cross multiply, we get 6 times 8 equals x. So $48 is our total. Two, number eight, Timely Tickers sold a watch at 130% of its cost. If the selling price was $32.50, what did the watch cost the store? Okay, so we have 130 over 100. And 32.50 over X. Okay, okay we can't use the 10% method because we don't know, we can't, there's nothing to take 10% of. And we can't use the substitution method because 130 is not a, a, a number that we can substitute in, okay? So it looks like we're stuck doing the ratios. Let's do the ratios. All right, we can kill a zero. That leaves us cross multiplying this. So we get 325 divided by 13. Okay, so goes in twice here. That's 6, 26, we get 65. And that is 5. So 5 times 3 is 15 and six. So it is $25 is our X. That one's kind of an ugly one. But you got to be careful then, since this was bigger than this, then this one's got to be bigger than this. Okay. I mentioned before, you know, if you if you can cross off some of the answers on hard ones, then you can make a guess when you're taking the test. The answers on this one were $2.50. You can cross that one off right away because going up 30%, that's about a third, a little less than a third. Uh, it's not, you're, if you go up a little bit less than a third, you're not going to get $32.50 from $2.50. Same with $6.50, which is the second answer. 
All right, that just gives you uh, 1650 and 25. Okay, so we got rid of these two. So we go, okay, let's look at these two. What is a th about a third of, of 16 is say five, a little under a third. So that would give us a price of 2150. And that's much too small. Okay, this one, about a third of it is like uh, eight, because eight times eight times three is 24. And that gives us $32 which is pretty close. Okay, so that's a way to estimate something difficult like this. Look at the answers and estimate from this. P2 number 11. On Saturday, 55 people showed up for a free class on Computers in Your Future, taught by Android. This was 137 and a half of those expected. How many people were expected? So we have 137 and a half. And that was 55 people. How many were expected? Okay. This looks really super ugly. But it's really not, not that bad. Okay. I see the 37 and a half. 37 and a half is 3 eighths. Okay, so it's the 100 percent is eight eighths, the 37 and a half is three eighths. So that gives us 11 eighths. Okay, so let's put that to use. We're going to get rid of this 37 and a half over 100 and write in 11 eighths. Now we can simplify. Divide both sides by 11. This gives us 5 over here and 1 over here. So we have 5 over x equals 1 over 8. So x equals 5 times 8, which is 40. 40 people were expected. Okay, P3, number 11. Buckboard purchased a $7,000 tractor at 20% off. Since he paid cash, the dealer gave Buck an additional 5% off the sales price. What did Buck pay for the tractor? All right. What we tend to want to do is say 20% and 5%, that gives us 25% off. But we can't really do that because the 20% is off $7,000 and the 5% was off the sale price. So the 20% and the 5% are off different amounts. So we can't combine them. Okay? Let's look at it. Okay? 7,000. 20%. Okay? 10% is 700. So 20% is 1,400. So the sale price was 7,000. Minus 1400, 656, 5, 5600. Okay. And then we take a 5% off of that. Okay, 10% is 560, so we cut that in half, 5% is 280, there's our 5%, our, uh, so 55600 minus 280, 0, 5, Four, three, five thousand three hundred and twenty is how much he paid. Let's look at if we had made that mistake 
Okay, let's put this over here someplace. Correct answer is 5,320. Let's see if we had done 20, 25 of 7,000, okay? That's 7,000 divided by four. Okay, so that is uh, one, eight, seven, five, zero. Okay, that would be uh, the discount for 25%. So let's subtract that. 7,000 minus 1750. All right, let's use the uh, 699, this is gonna be a zero anyway, plus one. Trick that I have. All right, so six, five, two, four, this is gonna be nine plus one is 10. So we end up with uh, 5,250 instead of 5,320. So the difference between these two is the difference due to applying the 5% to the total rather than to the sale price. And you can bet that both of these answers are going to be options. P4 number seven, a bronze statue with a wooden base weighed 56 pounds. The base weighed seven pounds. What percent of the total weight of the statue was bronze? Okay, so we've got this bronze statue and it's got a base made of wood. This is seven pounds. The total is 56 pounds. Okay, when you come across a problem that's kind of awkward and you're trying to figure out what the heck it's talking about, draw a picture. Okay, it doesn't take very long and you get a clear idea of what you're looking at and how to handle it, okay? We want to know the percent of weight that this is. All right? Because seven pounds is such a small, nice number, I'm going to find the percent of weight that the base is and then subtract from 100, because that's going to be easier, okay? So seven over 56 plus X over 100. Okay, I go, I start to think about, okay, 10% is 5.6, 5, 5 which is kind of messy, that type of thing. But let's, uh, let's look at the numbers. 56 is seven times eight. So we can divide by seven. That gives us one eighth equals X over 100. One eighth is 12 and a half percent. How about that for fast and easy, huh? So now we're doing uh, to find, so the base is 12 and a half percent. So now we have 100 percent minus 12 and a half percent. And that's going to be 87 and a half percent. So the statue is 87 and a half percent. 25% of the lab tests Colleen ran on Monday were positive. If 120 were positive, how many tests were run? Okay, when you see that 25%, you should be going, yes! 120 were positive, and that's 25%. 25 25% 25 is one fourth. Okay, which means that we just multiply by four, 480. Done. P4 number 12. 620 invitations were sent out for the upcoming graduation. 30% responded that they will not attend. How many will attend? OK, 
Okay, so we've got a total number that it was sent out to, 620. And we have, this part is 30% that's not attending. And we have, that will attend, that's gonna be 70%. Okay, we wanna know what this number is. But this number is easier to find. So let's, let's find this number. So we have 30 over 100 equals x, equals x over 620, okay? 10% is 62 times three to make this three, 30% gives us six, okay? 30% is 186 that will not attend. So we gotta subtract it from this 620. 620 minus 186. Five, 11, 10, four, three, 434 will attend. It's really important to keep track of which one you're given and which one you're being asked for. That's the number one thing people screw up on. Okay, and the people who write the test know this. So they purposefully put things in like that. Okay. P6 number three. During target practice, Eagle hit the bullseye nine out of 45 times. What percentage of his total tries did he hit the bullseye? Okay, we have nine out of 45, and we're looking for the percent. Okay, well, nine goes into 45. So let's divide that. So we get one fifth equals X over 100. Well, one fifth is 20%. Done. P6, number eight, Econ has 1,500 in a savings account that pays 8.5% interest. How much will she accumulate in interest at the end of two and a half years if she makes no withdrawals? Okay, the interest in these problems, simple interest, is something that only occurs in math land, okay, because it's simple interest, it's the same amount of interest on the base, on the principal every year okay you don't add the interest in and and take eight and a half of that that's compound interest okay so unless they say it is compound interest usually they'll say it's simple interest but we treat it that way we do eight and a half and then multiply it by two and a half years Okay, because it's simple interest, we can do the multiplication beforehand. Okay, we can multiply eight and a half by two and a half and see what we get. Okay. So, let's see if we get something that's manageable. Eight and a half times two and a half. All right. That is a mixed number times a mixed number. So we have to simplify it. We have to change them into improper fractions and multiply across. Eight and a half. Eight times two is 16 plus one is 17. 17 halves times two and a half times five halves, okay? 50, 85. So that 85 fourths. 84 is 20, so this is 21 and 1 fourth. I was hoping it would come out to something that we knew about, but this isn't too bad. So 1,500 
okay, you say, what do you mean it's not too bad? That's terrible. It's not too bad with the 10% method, okay? 10% is 150. 20% is double this, 300. Okay? 1% is just moving this decimal over one more, 15. We got 21% is $315. Now a quarter percent is one fourth of this. All right, that's just about four. Because if it was 16, then it would be four. So it's about four. So we're looking for something a little bit under $319. Okay, we have $318.75. There we go. Is to do the eight and a half percent and then multiply by three. Let's look at that way. Okay. Ten percent is one hundred and fifty. Okay. Eight and a half is ten minus one minus a half. 1% is 15. So we're going to subtract that. So we've got 9% equals uh, 135. So now we need a half percent. Well, if 1% is 15, then half percent is half of this, which is seven and a half. So eight and a half percent is one, two, seven and a half. So 127 and a half. Now we have to multiply that by two and a half for two and a half years. And this is where we get the five times five is 25. 37, 5 and 2 is 10, 13, 5, 6, 0, 0, 15, 4, 5. So well, here's our 75 cents, 8, 11, and our 3, 18, 75. All right, so the biggest problem that people make when they're doing these problems is not setting it up correctly by putting you know, the sale price and the discount equal to each other. So the very first thing you need to do when you're reading these is draw this, this egg thing and label it with the total, the discount, the sale price so that you know what you're working with. I mean, you can still do the calculations, but you got to know whether you're calculating the piece that's taken off or the piece that remains. Okay. Whether it's the increase or the original, uh, or the original rate. Okay. That's all in percentages. The best way you can work on these is to work on them. Go through and say, okay, can I substitute a fraction? No. Can I use a 10% method? No. Then you got to use the ratio method and look for patterns, simplify and cross multiply. Okay. So this is the hardest lesson in the course. So best way to do it is to practice, practice, practice. Good luck. I'll see you tomorrow when we're talking about basic geometry.